guys, how's it going? My name is Jeff with AutoHunter.com, and today we're here at Legacy EV, uh, standing here with Maverick Knowles, the president of Legacy EV. And we're gonna be taking a look at some of the EV converted vehicles they have in their shop today, starting with this guy here. You wanna tell us a little bit about this uh, awesome hot rod? Yeah, so we're calling this one Project E. This is an old Model A sedan that we've converted to electric. And the idea with this vehicle is it's actually gonna be the premier prototyping vehicle for the aftermarket EV industry. So here we'll get to test all the new power plants that we're bringing to market and validate them before we start selling them to our customers. And so this one actually has new components that have not been seen before yet in the aftermarket. It's got a new three to one gear reducer. It's got a new charger in it from AEM. And it's really our opportunity to validate systems and also put them on the showcase before we bring them to market. Okay, sweet. And then this is currently the electric power plant. That's yeah. Famous. And so is this still rear wheel drive then or what's the breakdown there? Yeah, it is. So this is, it's not technically a Cascadia IM225 system, but that's what it's most similar to. The Cascadia IM225 is an integrated module that combines this motor and the inverter that gets paired with this. Mm -hmm. We actually bought them separate and you can't see the inverter right now because it's actually removed. But we, when we have the inverter on here, we wanted to be able to put it at a raked position. So it kind of looked like an old blower, like on that <laughs> gas powered motor. It just gives up some more texture up mm -hmm. front, which is cool. And when you're showcasing the power plant like this you just need a little bit more when the power plants are so small and compact so um cascadia im225 even though that's not technically the title um, which means it's got 225 kilowatts of power um, i believe this one after the three to one gear reducer puts out about 1100 foot pounds of torque wow yeah that's just pretty a wild. lot for a very light vehicle yeah yeah and then it is rear wheel drive so it goes straight to the stock rear end um and then as you can see, yeah, very custom hot rod. So this was actually a Jimmy Graham hot rod, had a old Chevy big block in it. Um, and yeah, it was super fun to drive. Um, it's actually got better range now as an EV than it did as a <laughs> gas powered car, add a little eight gallon tank. Now it's got 85 kilowatt hours of battery. So it's just full of batteries in the back. Wow. Um, and it'll probably go 200 miles. That, wow, yeah. that's, yeah, that's good for a hot rod. And yeah. then are you able to equip this with everything, like all the regular creature comforts as far as AC and all that type of stuff? Yeah, yeah, you definitely can. It doesn't have AC on it right now, but basically you just need an electric AC compressor. So anything mm -hmm. that ran off a belt before, you're gonna put an electric version of it in the system now. Um, but yeah, you can plumb it all through the original vents and everything. So you don't have to make any sacrifices. You can generally add all of your modern stuff, in which case is better than what it would have been from the 1930s. And right. even stick to the uh, stereotypical hot rod with yeah. the engine exposed in the middle even. Yep, definitely. So are these generally waterproof components then as well? Yeah, yeah, they're all like IP66 rated, which means, you know, they're good to be outside and through serious water jets. They just can't be submerged under standing water. But mm -hmm. even some of the components are actually rated to be fully submerged in water as well. There's some being wow. used in marine applications. Um, yeah, a bunch of different pretty wild scenarios. Yeah, so this would be more usable in yeah. that sense. That's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. Okay. Sweet, and then you guys have another truck that's standing here as well, yeah. so what's going on here? Yeah, so this one, this is the truck from TFL Truck, and this was converted by one of our authorized installers, 101 mm -hmm. Motors. Um, this is using a dual Hyper 9 power plant. This produces around 600 foot pounds of torque and 280 horsepower. Um, and yeah, this is one of our standard kit offerings. Um, it's actually two motors and one of them's dual shaft so it's got shafts coming out of each end mm -hmm. and then they're coupled at the shaft and then it goes straight to the divorce transfer case so this still has four high four low um, it can be a great work truck in fact tfl is going to have some videos showing this thing hauling around like 2500 pounds of logs holy just smokes. In the back and it's handling it all like a beast so. so that means even with the electric power plant you don't make any sacrifices to the usability of the vehicle but if anything you've made some torque upgrades right. and everything's going to be just that much faster and more responsive. Yeah, totally. Well, and from the exterior, there's no signs of it being an EV. A lot of times these trucks will have a lot of the batteries in the back straight up against the cab. Mm -hmm. Works great for weight distribution, like nothing wrong with that at all. But TFL really wanted this one to be a sleeper and just to look like it did originally. That's why we even left all the patina and the chips out of the Bondo in the back. Mm -hmm. um, but when you get in it and step on it, you can feel that it's got some torque. Yeah, and then you guys have a, a clever nameplate here for the vehicle as well. It's no longer an F100, but now it's an E100. Yep. 
And then all of the, so most of the components are here under the hood as far as the batteries and everything, right? Yep, yeah, so there's 10 Tesla modules up here. They're 18650 Tesla modules from an old Model S, but there's also five modules in the rear that you can see in the back as well. Then these are two inverters up here mounted to this faceplate. Um, and that's basically taking the DC power from the batteries, putting it into three phase AC current so you can power the motor. Okay. Or um, motors. Let's go ahead and let's pop open the interior here and yeah. see what's going on in there as Definitely. far as what changes with the interior for the vehicles. Yeah, so not much changes on the interior of the vehicle. The gauge cluster is all left the same. Even the battery level capacity is wired into the fuel gauge, so you can actually monitor your battery capacity on the fuel gauge. But what has changed is this selector here. So we've got neutral, park, reverse, and then drive. And so there's actually a parking pole or parking actuator that's on the torque box that'll lock the gears into place through an electric solenoid when you put it into park, which is pretty cool because EVs actually um, you got to have a parking pole to make them stay in place. Um, and then over here, we've got this glass panel that 101 installed, so you can actually see the motors and you can watch them spin as you're driving, which is pretty sweet. And then this display here, this is going to show your battery info more in depth, so you can actually look at each individual cell series and see how they're performing, what their voltage is, and get a lot of details on the EV batteries and their health. Cool. I think we're good. All right, yeah, I drove it like 60 miles in Colorado that one trip. Yeah, that's pretty amazing how quiet that is. Yeah. You hear everything else over the engines. It'll probably. There we go. This guy's driving with the door open. <laughs> All right, I'll go left and then we can turn around. Sounds good. Come back. So you can see on this display, we got all our battery health info. So you can see the amps we're drawing and then the voltage of the battery pack as a whole. And then down here is the voltage of every cell. And that blue to red meter is showing you basically white is those things are peak voltage and then red is there getting to the minimum for discharge that they can handle. And it'll all compute that and shut it off internally uh, as it needs to make sure that all the cells are staying within a safe, healthy voltage. And then here you've got your battery gauge. So empty to full, we're at 41 kilowatt hours out of the 78 total kilowatt hour capacity available. And then when we get out on the road here, you can look down and see through this tunnel, the motor shaft's actually spinning. Definitely still Sounds like an old truck, drives like an old truck, but it's got a modern power plant that'll help it do quite a bit more than it used to be able to do. And then all this stopping right now is just regen. So you can see amps are going up because it's actually charging. Okay, so we just went for a ride, I guess, in the awesome E150 here. And it's actually amazing how smooth the transition is. And of course, the cool build stuff that you guys can kind of throw in there even mm -hmm. um, with some of the clear plates just to remind, I guess, how low key uh, the technology really is. So this is a really impressive vehicle <laughs> um, with everything you guys that have done. I guess, you know, what's your favorite part about some of these builds and things that you guys get to do? Oh man, there's always a unique aspect to every one of them which i think is my mm -hmm. favorite um and then right now it still feels like really new 
technology to everybody. And so being able to take these out to shows and talk to people about them is just the best. It's yeah. so fun. A living, breathing example of yeah. something like a CEV could put together. So cool. Well, thank you so much, Matt. Yeah, I really you. appreciate you giving us a tour, the facility and the vehicles and everything like that. And if you guys uh, could go ahead and throw a like on the video, we'd really appreciate it. And get subscribed as we produce a video content like this on a regular basis. And don't forget to check out Legacy EV yeah. on their various social media channels. We'll be sure to add those as well. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Thanks, guys.